All right, guys, and welcome back. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about tuning this calcium reactor. Um, but first, I wanna go ahead and thank all my subscribers, um, all my current subscribers, anybody that's new to the channel. If you're not subscribed, go ahead, hit the thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and get some of this great content that I'm trying to go ahead and get out to you guys here. So, what I want to talk to you guys about today is actually tuning the calcium reactor. There's a few ways of getting this done. Um, my method may not work for your tank, but I'm going to show you what I'm doing here uh, with my reef tank. And uh, if you guys like it and it works for your tank, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If not, let me know uh, what method you guys are using to uh, tune your calcium reactors out there. I know there's been uh, a couple videos out now regarding calcium reactors um, and there's different methods and different ways of tuning it. At the end of the day, we all just want our tanks to be stable and that's really what you're trying to do is just bring some more stability to the tank and trying to get um, these corals to grow in your system. So what I did here, uh, you guys can probably see, I made some changes to the way that this uh, Aquamax is set up and how everything's running. Uh, I'm gonna try to throw a video of me going ahead and uh, feeding everything in and dumping all the uh, media into the chamber and getting it kind of all set up and ready to go underneath the tank. Um, as you saw the uh, the, the uh, regulator just cut off here. So that's one of the things I want to talk about. But really, um, I had a video going for uh, for a moment when I was setting up the calcium reactor and getting it installed in here. I wanted to go ahead and show that to you guys. Unfortunately, the battery kind of ran out midway. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw the uh, video of me doing everything down below. But let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the main topic here, which is actually getting this thing tuned. After you get your calcium reactor set up, you get your CO2 in, you get your actual media chamber in with the calcium, you get the pump running, and you get all these lines hooked up. You're gonna wanna do testing, and I recommend doing testing pretty much on a daily basis. First off, actually, let's rewind this. First, you wanna make sure you test your tank before you start running the calcium reactor. If you're at a good spot with your DKH, your calcium and everything, then that's fine. If not, it is recommended to go ahead and get it up to um, the levels of where you would like for it to be and then start to test from there. That can be done in different ways, whether you use calc washer or you use two part, um, however, uh, whichever method you decide on doing is going to be up to you but it's kind of recommended to start from kind of like a base level to start your readings from because you don't want to start low and then turn on the calcium reactor and then have it shoot up um, and skyrocket or at least you know you don't want it to affect the corals which is what you're trying to do is get those things to grow so once you do your testing you get your base level I'm going to come here to your calcium reactor. Now there's a few lines that I want to point out here. This one right now is the feed line that's coming into the calcium reactor from the, uh, from the tank itself. This is the CO2 that goes into the bubble counter that is actually melting the media down. And then there's another line coming out the top here which is the affluent line that's gonna go back into the tank. So a real quick thing, the CO2 feeds in here and melts the medium. Um, the water that's coming into the tank eventually gets pushed out and back into your tank. Those are gonna be really important for you there to understand that whatever's coming in has to go out and the pH in here will be affected by how fast that happens, or at least how fast the flow is that's coming through here. Um, your level of CO2 going into the chamber has to hit a certain pH. And before when I mentioned testing in my previous video, and I mentioned the, the, uh, 
the pH probe. That's going to be helpful, especially um, with getting this thing, we're getting this thing tuned properly. So the pH in here can range anywhere from seven to I believe 6.5. 6.5 is pretty low. So anywhere in that particular range is going to be the range at which the media in this chamber is going to start to dissolve and at the end of the day dose the calcium and alkalinity to your reef tank. Um, that's going to be controlled, at least the pH is going to be controlled by several things, how much CO2 you got going in and how much of the effluent line you have leaving out at what rate. And that's why you will see a lot of people say do a certain drip rate here and a certain bubble count here to get to X number. I run mine a little bit different where I will let this run full full throttle. Well, I would I will actually I won't do a drip. I'll let it run at a good stream. Um, and then I will adjust the CO2 coming in to get the pH down in the chamber to a point that's that works for me here. So when I say to start doing your baseline testing, I want to see how much or is your alkalinity dropping? And based off of that, you can start at a higher pH in the tank or in a higher pH in your calcium reactor. And then from starting at that higher pH, you can see is your alkalinity decreasing or is it increasing as the days go on? I would say to test every day, leave the calcium rep running at a certain point once you get it tuned to that spot there, if you can get it to stay there. Um, like I said, somewhere between seven, I'd say do a 10 point difference. So if you start at seven, work your way down between 6.9 and seven. So what I'm saying there is that at seven, your <clears throat> regulator kicks on, and then at 6.9, depending on what type of controller you're using, the regulator turns off. And then test your alkalinity throughout that time period and see is it going up or is it going down. If it starts to go down, you can go ahead and adjust the, um, the pH where this is gonna turn off and on. And you may wanna adjust it a couple points. It's gonna take time to go ahead and tune everything um, and at least find that sweet spot where you want your alkalinity to add in your tank. Um, I shoot for about eight to nine and with this particular reactor, I'm looking at a DK or at least a pH level of about 6.95 to 6.97. Um, right now the corals aren't aren't uh, in an excessive growth uh, rate right now. So there's not a high demand for the alkalinity. And that's the reason you do have to test because if your corals are not taking up that alkalinity at a high rate and you start at 6.5 or lower, you're gonna shoot your alkalinity sky high and that's gonna cause a lot of problems for you and you won't be happy. So, couple of things here uh, I know it kind of was all over the place but what I want to make sure that you guys understand is to test your tank get your baseline start at a higher pH for your reactor and then work your way down once you find that spot where the alkalinity isn't dropping or it isn't climbing too high you're right on track you know where you need to be you can then either decrease it a little bit more to try to get you back to that sweet spot that works for you or you can leave it right where it's at it's totally up to you again to your tank you'll know what works for your corals um, one thing i do want to point out i did remove this pre-filter this pre-filter sounded like a great idea at first but because i have it being fed by the tank anything that went in um, it was a pre-filter so anything that was going in, I did have an auto feeder going, so there would be food that would come through this line. 
um, any minute particles would get filtered out by it. And what would happen is it would slow the rate of the effluent going out. And when that slowed down, the regulator would be on and off a lot more because now I reduced the, the water exiting out, which meant that there was more pH sitting in here. The pH, the pH uh, probe sensed that and turned off the regulator. So that's the reason I took this off. I tested that out for a while. I had just the just the little cylinder here. And I let it run with it in it, and it still got clogged. Um, I then, you know, went ahead and removed the cylinder, went to this straight line with the valve, and it works. Here's the thing, and there is a video out by uh, by Rico recently that he did on the calcium reactors. Um, no joke, and you will probably talk to anybody who has a calcium reactor, they will tell you this particular valve you're gonna be playing with almost every day, trying to get the flow to stay where you want it to, so that way you can keep the pH proper inside of this tank. I'm gonna eventually upgrade this and get a, get a parallelistic pump on here to go ahead and uh, take care of that. Another thing is this little <clears throat> regulator. Now, regulators are great for the planning, planning tank guys. I know they usually run it um, a few hours a day. They may turn it off or on. That can be variable. This is another thing that I, I definitely am um, going to change here for the simple fact that if you ever watch his video and you actually um, pay attention to what he's saying and then you also do some research here, and which is what I should have done. I, I, I did the research on it. I didn't know this one little thing, which I'm gonna tell you guys right now. This little needle valve is finicky. And when I say finicky, I, I think I have this turned all the way down to a, to a bare minimum, a smidge of a touch. Hold on, let me see something. I'm gonna turn on that reactor or that regulator and get it up and running here. Get this apex up and we'll turn this back on. All right. So the regulator comes on, the bubbles start coming out of the bubble counter, and the pH drops. Well, as you can see, the moment I, I, I barely touch this, and look, I step away, and what happens? The thing turns into a stream. And that was barely even turning it. Now, folks will tell you, hey, you got the pH, you got the, uh, the pressure up too high or whatever the case may be. It doesn't matter how, how or where I set this to. I've gotten it to a point where I can have one bubble a second. And at, at, at any point in time, it could turn into possibly a little stream or no bubbles at all. Um, what I found out in doing some more research on this is that the... The needle valve on these are affected by the temperature, the ambient te temperature around the house, the um, temperature anywhere in this vicinity of this regulator will be affected by it. On top of that, the bottle pressure can be affected by it. So here's a couple things that I'm going to suggest that you guys do whenever or if you guys do plan on getting. Um, the calcium reactor and going that route. Believe what the veterans have said. You know, get yourself the dose, the carbon doser to regulate it. Get yourself a pump to regulate that fluent line. Whether it's in or out, pushing or pulling, however you want to do it, get one of those, or both of those actually, get both of them. 
um, for your reactor. So that way you don't run into the problem that I'm pretty sure a lot of these guys have gone through time after time. They don't mention it because they're gonna tell you, oh, I got a calcium reactor on my tank. And that's great, you got a calcium reactor on your tank. And you're, you got a wonderful, wonderful system. The corals look beautiful. But they don't tell you almost every other day before I, before I went the route of getting the, uh, the dose or a paralytic pump, I had to go ahead and fiddle with knobs and valves and, and tweak things periodically. Everybody says it's all plug and play. The only thing that's really plug and play is a um, is a dosing pump. You plug that in, you set your numbers, you're on your way. But if you want real stability with everything and you're getting your calcium alkalinity trace elements, everything that was in a coral coming back out of a coral into your tank is going to be with the calcium reactor. But there is some key things that you do have to get and those are a few things that I would definitely suggest to get unless you like to come down and fiddle with the valve turning it off and on as you can see I'm, I'm fiddling with the valve because today it did slow down to a drip so if i show you here all day this is what my reactor's been doing up and down and up and down and again it's been set to turn off and on at a set point but there's moments where it'll be fine and that's where there's that varying in the pressure or temperature of the bottle and that just messes with things so hang on one second here um, I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be right back All right, so I'm back and like that, with a bit of movie magic, I dropped the carbon doser on this. So that's my first step in fixing and remedying a problem that I had with the reactor. Get some stability going in, get some stability going out, and I will be back on track to having a stable, alkalinity and calcium into this tank um, so I'm gonna watch this as I, I set it to one bubble per second but again if you guys don't know carbondoser.com um, I got mine from aquatic warehouse they had the best price over everybody um, very fast shipping I uh, got it within a few days Kind of was anxious to go ahead and get this on here, but I really wanted to do this uh, video for you guys to get it out there and show you um, this particular regulator on this tank. So it's gonna do one bubble per second by the light. I can tell based off of um, the bubble counter here, obviously this, probably needs to purge a little bit more as you can see I'm tapping it and there's more bubbles coming out of out of here or I may need to look um, into a different way of doing the bubble counting um, visually but I'm going to rely on the fact that there has been many 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 reefers who have used this and swear by it and attest to that every time that light flashes you're dosing one um, one bubble or however the rate is of CO2 to the reactor. So again, it's your tank. Do what works for you here. Do what's going to be easy for you. You know what goes on in your life. If you're in front of the tank a lot of times and you can get down there and make those little fine tune adjustments, by all means, go for it. Um, if you don't get under the tank a lot but you want to be able to have it stable regardless of the fact I would say go ahead and get this it's gonna save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches when it comes down to tuning these calcium reactors you're gonna find a lot of folks out there say just set it this way set a stream going to do 10 bubbles per sec three bubbles per second test your tank see what your tank is taking in 
and adjust your reactor to that um, need. And that will make you happy in the long run and probably save you a lot of money because the moment you start raising alkalinity on the tank, you're gonna go ahead and melt through some corals there if you're not watching everything. So test your tank, watch your reactor, and make sure that you guys see where everything is at. And you should be right on track to have a nice, stable, beautiful tank like you see out here on a lot of these YouTube videos. Again, I just wanna go ahead and let you guys know I appreciate everybody who comments on the videos. I appreciate all my subscribers um, that have been with me uh, through everything here. Um, again, trying to get out a lot of videos regarding the reef tank um, and show you guys what's going on and kind of what it takes here. Even if you, even if you have your favorite subscriber, you have another channel that you watch, um, it's always good to have a, a, a good collective amount of information to go off of. And that's what it takes a lot of times for folks to realize, yeah, this works. So if my video is helpful, go ahead and throw a thumbs up on it and I'll check you guys on the next one.